Hey, hi there, Aries. Welcome to my channel. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to those energies and influences that are coming through for your October monthly reading in love. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is a condensed general reading. Please only take the portions that resonate with you. Okay, Aries, off camera to save time, I've done a protective blessing. I've meditated over and shuffled these cards just for you. Your first card. It's the general atmosphere. It's the background and the basis of the matter. The Eight of Wands, Aries. Fire energy. This is movement. It's rapid, exciting movement. It's matters reaching a conclusion. This can be travel. It's full of surprises and opportunities. This is also someone's Mercury in Sagittarius. This is action. It's a sudden burst of energy. This is a rapid and swift development with a conclusion. It's changes on many levels. It's an increased exchange of energy that makes many things easier and some things even possible. You'll need to become aware of intentions and motivations of yours and others. This is being in motion, things that are already set into motion. This highlights and intensifies all around it. This can be infatuation or Cupid's arrows. It's renewed activity. It's moving towards a goal. You're poised to hit the target, so continue on with your plans. This is being lively and motivated, communicative, acting quickly, sending or receiving messages or proposals, traveling, launching activities, multitasking, or pursuing multiple interests. This can be a transition. It's, it's the new beginning and an end of a period of delay or stagnation. Your second card. This is the energy that's crossing over your path. Here you are, Aries, the King of Wands. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This fire energy person is independent, and they're influential, and they help those that they care about. You can rely on their honesty and intelligence and loyalty. They're fair-minded, and they give you good advice. This can also refer to a situation which is exactly as it appears, with no hint of deception. There's good fortune coming your way. Could be in the form of unexpected help or advice or good news, or a promotion, or an inheritance. This is spinning things around in your head. This person is loyal and noble, and sometimes they're too hasty and impatient. They're honest and friendly, and they're full of passion. This can be a good marriage and a devoted friend. They're strong, and they have a powerful belief in their self and their achievements. Sometimes they're impatient, and they may long for the day they rode free as a knight. They dislike details, yet they're charming and inspiring. They've mastered the use of the fiery element, and they're wise about business and they know when to take action and how to create harmonious human relationships in the process. Your third card, and this is how it affects you. This can be your attitude. The Three of Swords, Aries. Air energy. This is a realization, a painful truth. This has to do with the emotions. It's a flash of understanding. It has to do with emotional pain. It could be a difficult realization. This is also someone's Saturn in Libra. Maybe your hopes were higher than the results. There could be a severance, a separation, and feeling isolated from th something you love, and feeling the pain of separation. The suffering comes from holding on to the past. This could be the end of a relationship, or the loss of trust due to a betrayal, or a rejection, or losing your job. Could be the end of some sort of ailment through surgery, or letting go of some way of thinking that is no longer useful. It's not an easy loss, but the release will make room for further growth and maturity. Pain is a strong motivator to change, and when you fix it, you can grow. This is depression and longing and separation, sometimes through distance. It's quarrels, upsets, divided opinions, sadness from being apart. This is cutting through to the heart of the matter with your mind. Your fourth card. It's the position of the future. It's the outcome. 
the results, and the advice. Number six of the major arcana in the Rider Waite deck, the lovers. This can be a Gemini, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Doesn't have to be though. This is the fruitfulness of correct thought. It can represent a choice, a temptation, attraction. This can be a soulmate. We learn and grow through our soulmate relationships. This is alignment. It's balance between physical and desire and physical needs. Sometimes it's a difficult choice. This card represents the power of a mature sexual union, and the angel above them stands for truth and strength found in their relationship. This is physical and emotional healing. It can also be pointing to a future relationship. If it concerns something that's unrelated to sex or love, it can also mean help from a lover or a friend. If you're single, it's time to let love come into your life. This card can be a blessing, a need to heal a rift, or a romantic involvement coming. It's a critical life decision with a love relationship, being at a crossroads. Remember to act with your heart, and choose the best version of yourself, and do what you love and everything else will follow naturally. And be clear about your personal beliefs. Communicate openly and honestly, and that will create harmonious and fulfilling relationships built on trust and respect. The Three of Swords with the Lover's card, this is making a decision in a major love relationship that cuts to the heart of the matter. Think about how you feel now, knowing yourself emotionally, and decide to grow and not stay in place. Your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card. The underlying issue, this is what's unseen. Number 10 of the Wheel of Fortune of the Major Arcana. This is a card that's ruled by the four elements, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, and Taurus. They're the fixed signs, our guides through the next phase of life. This is a destiny card. It's karmic. It's fate. This is a karmic lesson to be learned here. Something has been put into motion over which you have now little or no control, and you must accept the actions of the forces of destiny and align yourself with those aims. This is a considered a favorable outcome. It's a turning point, an unexpected stroke of luck. Could even be a windfall. The wings on the creatures assigned to the zodiac represent stability amidst movement and change, and each holds to the Torah. That's the law that represents wisdom. Here's your advice from the Oracle deck. Ask your guides by Sonia Choquette. Aries, you've got imagination from your inner child guide. Card number seven, imagination. Has to do with nocturnal dreams, daydreaming, reverence, and fantasy. Your divine inner child spirit is knocking at your door, inviting you to step away from a serious life filled with too much work and drudgery and allow yourself some well-deserved playtime. Your life is presently over-controlled by others' needs and much too burdened with responsibilities. Consequently, you're losing touch with your inspiration and creativity. Listen to your inner child. Take time to daydream, fantasize, visualize, wonder, and explore. Feed your inner child with art classes, theater tickets, concerts, and other types of recreational activities. If you don't honor your inner child's needs, she or he will get your attention by throwing one heck of a childish tantrum, manifesting in a chronic bad mood or a nasty depression. You need this magic right now. Your inner child's message? Come play with me. Thanks, you guys, Aries. I hope you stay tuned in and leave me a comment or a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Now remember... What goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.